the fire of Comos Hill. Um, Comos Hill, Little River, burnt, basically burnt to the ground in 1897. So let me set the stage for you. October of 1897. Everybody's got their crops in, the hay is in the barn, the houses are all banked and ready for winter, and then the fire occurs and takes it all away. No loss of life, but what do you do? The poor, the people are poor. They've just basically got animals and your food, and they're, they're living subsistently. This is how the fire occurred. There was people living on Ram Island, which is an island just between Camus Hill and the river. And on a Sunday, on a, on a Friday night, they came on land to have a party, and when they were supposed to go back, they were supposed to light a signal fire on the side of the shore, uh, indicating that they were ready to be picked up. And so this is what happened. And they left, and uh, this is, the fire was just below Miffis House, or just south of the wharf. So a place called the Plant of Zedor. I, I've not yet been able to figure out who Zedor was, uh, Isador, but anyway, this is what the name of the place. The wind picked up. After they left, the wind picked up, and it took in the woods. And it was in a north... Calvin, help me out. <laughs> Direction-wise, from up Little River, north... North, north, east, northwest. A northwest wind picked up, took the fire, and and took off like that. So if you draw a line, it starts there and it goes right down to where Robert lives on top of the hill. That's basically the line, and that's where it took. I'm just going to refer to these. The Papers at the time said the rains had not come. Everything was tinder dry. Yeah, like, like, like last year, remember? Okay. Now, the fields, had, like I say, were all harvested. Uh, there was other fires in the area that the papers at the time was referring to. It was Belleville. The fence had burnt at the railway station. The station was damaged. Plymouth. The houses were in constant danger of being burnt. But none of them were lost. Uh, to Forbes Point in Shelburne mm -hmm. County, a uh, building had burnt down, but the most devastating one was exactly on the same day our place burned, Windsor burned, the Great Fire of Windsor. 2,000 people were put homeless, two and a half million dollars of loss, and only insured for uh, 582,000 of them. Mm -hmm. So, uh, The people whose houses were burnt uh, was in a line of, like I say, that, in that direction. The church had just been built, it was a brand new church, a couple years before. It was spared, probably because the grounds around it had all been excavated or cleared back. Uh, all the Claremonts, all Leo and Leo's house, your, your house. All saved, probably because all the fields were in the back, separating the, the fire from the house. We've, we've looked at this. Yet, the barn on the other side, and where Victor Cutrell lives, mm -hmm. that was lost. Mm -hmm. Up the road, where James Bond lived. James Harris, James Bond, he had married Papa Duke. Uh, he had lost his place. And it kept on going down, and it burnt. On, Norez house down on East Hill Road. It burnt uh, Moses Newell's house mm -hmm. on top of the hill where Robert lives now, mm -hmm. and Tuffield Jackard's house mm -hmm. down behind it. <clears throat> Those houses are all houses of the fire. They've all been replaced. They're all built the same. They're all exactly the same. One might have the, la the stairwell on one side or the other, but they were all replaced. Not all replaced that were burnt. There were seven burnt, only five replaced. We don't know why the other ones weren't replaced, but probably they didn't want to settle there again, and they moved on. Uh, I have the names of all these people who uh, 
who lost their houses and all that, but uh, the James Bond, this happened in October. He was 31, and three months later he died, leaving her with three children at Christmas time, or roughly around that time, yeah. Uh, the, the house where Victor lives, that was a replacement. That was that was Grampy Jim, uh, John R. Uh, that one fell again to fire the day that Mom and Dad got married. Yeah, it burned. It burned the gen 30th of January, 1956. So, and and now it was replaced a third time by by the one that's there now. Uh, in all, these fires took. How many people were? Fifty people were. Fifty people were went homeless. There were six houses and five barns and all that we could figure out. We don't know where they went, who they lived with, how they survived the winter. I know there was two hundred and fifty dollars raised by the municipality of Argyle. There was five hundred dollars raised from the town of Yarmouth. Uh, there was. Uh, 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 Vincent Richard of Wedgeport reported in the Evangeline that he traveled with a cart. There's a relative in back there. Vincent That's right. Jean. Oh, oh Grand Père. He traveled the Digby County and Yarmouth County area asking for money to help out the Acadians that had suffered so greatly. That's what he did during, for this fire. And uh, they 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 gave two the Yarmouth gave two thousand dollars to Windsor who had lost so much and five hundred dollars to Mosil. So that was quite a bit of money. So they were quite nice about the whole thing. Uh, in all, uh, oh no, uh, in some of the interviews, like Aunt Betty and them when she was still, they saw the fire coming from a long ways off because they were high, so they knew the fire was coming. What was valuable to them? Quilts, clothing, they gathered as much as they could and stuffed it in the well. And some moved down to the shore. And, and well, they all had, everybody came in droves ahead of the fire and ended up down on the shore, mm -hmm. down to the Cabano. Yeah. And then onward to the Surat down mm -hmm. below. And all these people, and there, I got a, a number here which is, they started at several months old mm -hmm. to something like 90 years old or 80 years old. That was being all driven to the shore, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, Jarvis, was, he was 60, uh, yeah. So were they getting ready to take to the water with boats in case? Or? They, I don't think they had boats down, down, uh, down there. They, they just took the shoreline and went down. It says that they went southern, and they went down to the Surrex, which is way way down to the Rocha Saint Pierre again. Yeah, so to escape. So uh, one of these people, an, an old couple living possibly in a log house, halfway down the hill. Well, the only one that I could discover that lived there was my great grand. Great, great, great grandfather, Mande Jacques, and his wife, Henriette Boucher. And uh, you can find them in the next census records living with uh, their daughter in Melbourne. Mm -hmm. So, and then he dies in 1908 and she dies a few years later. But, uh, yeah. Oh, Mande, the reason his name is Mande is because his godfather was Jean Maudet de Sigon. Oh, yeah? Yeah. When he baptized him, there was no godfather, so he put himself down as a godfather for <laughs> Uh Any other stories you wanted to? That was it? That's what happened to that fire anyway.